You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. So happy to have you back with me today on this Total Wellness Tuesday show, where we are going to be going over advanced body typing and the advanced Ayurvedic dosha assessments. So last week, we covered the starting point, the basics on episode 907. Definitely tune into that show if you have not, because we went through a head-to-toe assessment of your body type. So it goes from hair, forehead, eyebrows, eyes, it does nose, teeth, mouth, like everything we went through the entire body so that you can begin to learn and understand your unique body type. And so I put that on episode 907. That's an actual quiz there. I don't like to use the word quiz, but it's your starting point. And the reason that we have to start with the actual frame of the body is so that you understand how to balance that through nutrition and then as we go through that lifestyle as well. Well, today we're going to be going much deeper into your unique body type. That means we're not going to just look at the frame of the body, but also the mindset, the constitution, the skin type, like everything. So I can't wait to bring you this show today. Really excited to get started. And so what I'm going to do on today's show is actually go through all of the vata-based qualities first. Then I'm going to go through all of the pitta-based qualities and finally ending with the kapha. And we'll pull it all together with the understanding that you might have a little bit of all three, which obviously most people do, but you're going to be stronger for one of them most likely or predominantly. So I'll go through this literally top to bottom vata, which we call the ectomorph. We call the pitta, the mesomorph, and the kapha, the endomorph. All three, before I get started, I want to say are amazing body types, amazing body types. They have a lot of pros to them, and then they have some cons. Now, the pros you want to bring out but not take too far. So that's really, really important that we talk about that as well. Because in Ayurveda, we call that an excess, right? So we don't want to take that too far. And we do not want to take our cons, obviously, too far in the other direction as well, which depletes us. So as we're going through this, I want you to kind of think about where you're at in terms of body type, but also with the understanding that many of these things beyond our frame, which I talked about last week, and that's why I did start with that, are our current space in life. We call it the phenotype or the vakriti in Ayurvedic medicine, and that is not our genotype. So for example, as I begin to get into this vata body type, well, one of the qualities of the vata is oftentimes they trend more towards constipation. But as we're talking about that, you might say, oh, well, I'm vata then because I typically tend towards constipation. But it it may not be true. Maybe you just don't drink enough water. Maybe you don't get enough fiber. Maybe you're eating a food such as dairy that could be constipation that doesn't work well with your specific body. So you have to understand that any one quality doesn't make you that genotype, doesn't make you that dosha. But what it might mean is that you have an imbalance in that area, which still does need to be taken care of. So I want to go through all that today. Remember, this is an in-depth topic. But going forward, Every single week, I'm going to do one new show on Ayurvedic medicine. And so we're going to go through the specific diets that are right for every body type. We're going to go through the exercise. We're going to go through sleep. Every single week, we'll go through a new part to that. So I'm really excited about bringing this series to you. And what I'd like to do now is just get right into it. So the vata, we'll call the kind of the overall picture of the vata body type. You have to understand that the vata is essentially governed by and translates to wind or move, like things that move. So when you're thinking about the vata body type, you can use that wind or movement, air and ether, which vata is made up of, or air and space as it's sometimes called. Now you have to think about like, how would that translate over to the body? Because if you can already start to think about that, you can understand what might be more of a vata-based type, such as vata is typically love an irregular schedule. They don't like to do the same thing at the same time every day. Go to bed later or earlier. 
Their appetite is very, very varied. It could be light one day, maybe a little bit stronger. They love to travel. So when you look at that, I mean, I'm going to go through more of it right now, but understand that the Vata would be anything governed by more of that wind or movement through space. So in Dr. Vazant Lad's book, or Vazant Lad, it's called the Textbook of Ayurveda. This is volume one. What I'd like to do is just read from that specifically how he describes the Vata, and then I'm going to give my take on it as well. So the attributes of the Vata would be drier skin, hair, lips, tongue. So all these, again, dry, dry colon, tending towards constipation or potentially a hoarse voice. They have lighter muscles, so it's governed by dry. The next quality or attribute we call it in Ayurveda is light. So light muscles, bones, thin body frame, scanty sleep, and underweight. So we talk about that. If someone has a vata imbalance, no matter what constitution they are, then they would be considered to have a vata imbalance. Typically cold. Cold is another attribute. Cold hands and cold feet, poor circulation, hates the cold, loves the hot, and they have stiff muscles. Now again, what if you have cold hands and feet? Might you be a vata? Oftentimes, you're actually a kapha body type, and you may have a low thyroid. So again, I'm just going to kind of throw in my clinical-based perspective as well, and just to understand that there are other mentions of this as well in medicine. All right. Also characterized by rough, rougher skin, cracked skin, cracked nails, hair, teeth, hands, dry feet, and cracking joints. Another attribute is subtle, meaning there's a subtle fear or anxiety, insecurity. They get more nervous. They have sometimes some muscle twitching or fine tremors. That would be more of a vata-based disorder. They're mobile, which is faster walking, fast talking, do a lot of things at the same time, erratic, restless, always moving the hands and the feet. So you're basically showing that nervousness right there. A lot of dreams, loves traveling, doesn't like to stay at one place at all at the same time. Mood swings, shaky faith, and a scattered mind. All right, another attribute is clear. So they typically can think of things or understand things quickly, but then they forget very quickly as well. They oftentimes feel lonely, difficulty recalling memories. Astringent. All right, so astringent is a quality of the vata. means they have a drier sensation in the throat. They get hiccups. They love oily or warmer foods, crave sweets, crave sour, salty tastes, tendency towards constipation. Again, craving towards sweets might be a kindy to overgrowth, or there are other things as well, but again, keep this in mind for the vata body type. And then more of the darker complexion, doesn't have to be, but darker eyes, darker skin, and a sometimes a darker coated tongue. So that's from Vazant Lad's book. I'll link up his book, of course, in the show notes today. Just want to give you a little bit more qualities of the vata beyond that. So since this is like Vazant Lad teaches very traditional old school Ayurvedic medicine, amazing books. Love his books. My mentor directly learned from him and wrote these textbooks as well. So of course, I'm very partial to them as well. But I want to let you know too, other things about vata would be people that we talked about last week, they don't gain weight easily. Sometimes it's difficult to put on weight in general. Oftentimes, they're quite tall or on the shorter side. So they're one typically or the other. They have a thinner neck, thinner, longer fingers. Their energy kind of comes in bursts. They feel high energy and then they drop down low. Appetite is variable. Skin is dry. Colder hands and feet. They can be lighter sleepers and definitely prefer warm to cold because their body's on more of the colder side. They don't have a lot of insulation on that body, as we'll call it, in order to even keep them warm in the first place. Now, some of the psychological characteristics, which again, I don't like to ever put this in a quiz because this could be for anybody, but if you're experiencing the vata psychological-based characteristics, it would be people who don't keep a regular routine. They're always on the go. They like to talk quick. They like to talk with their hands. Sometimes there's a lot of nervous energy or they're anxious, sometimes insecure. They forget things quickly, as I spoke about before. Their mind's always active, but they can feel restless at the same time. And they can also be very creative and imaginative. So a lot of great qualities to that vata, but you can see that they could often get very burnt out very quickly. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that for them, a more peaceful-based environment is not always what they crave, but what they need. They need more yoga, although people who are high vata love to do more things like running, right? They love to get that movement, that wind going definitely want to stay away from more of the alcohol and definitely more of the coffee and do a more of a relaxing tea, maybe like a chamomile-based tea. 
good for them to go to bed earlier, get into a rhythm and routine, which I know that they don't like. Meditation is also fantastic. Hatha yoga, one of my favorites, walking. Really, really great for that vata body type, but I'll be going over specific diets and lifestyle for the vata in the future as well. So hopefully that gave you a good snapshot of what that vata is about. Again, we talked all about the vata frame last week. Today was more about the drier qualities, right? So the drier, light, cold, rough, subtle, and subtle means more from an Ayurvedic perspective, more towards the anxiety or nervousness, right? Mobile or mobile, which means they're more erratic, they talk quickly, they're kind of all over the place. I've got a lot of vata in myself. And then in terms of more of that drier and the the craving for more saltier, sweeter foods. And, and I did a huge Ayurvedic lecture quite some time ago. And I went deep into the nutritional supplements and the electrolytes and everything that the vata needs. And one of the things is sea salt or salt in general, sodium, which is kind of the direct opposite of what the kapha needs. Remember, the kapha and vata share certain qualities, but they're almost polar opposites. Now, of course, they again, we always have a little bit of each one. But with the vata, at least, they need a little bit more of that sodium. They're going to be lower in electrolytes. And think of the vata as more catabolic. They don't accumulate, which is the direct opposite of the kapha body type, which literally kapha translates to that which sticks, meaning that the kapha accumulates. It's more anabolic. So we'll talk about the kapha towards the end. Hopefully that was helpful. I am happy to answer more questions on this. And we had so much feedback that people want us to provide a service to let them know what their dosha is, their body type. And we'd be happy to do that. That is something that we will do in the future because we got such great feedback on that. So we're happy to do that. We will offer that as a service in the future. It will be very, very easy as how to do it. You'll simply send in specific photos that we're looking for, and we'll send you back a head-to-toe assessment. Looking forward to that. We have so much going on right now. It won't be something that we'll be able to launch that quickly. But I do want you to know that episode 907, so episode 900 started our Ayurvedic talks. 907 last week was essentially a quiz to find out your body type through your frame, which is the most important way to look at it. And today is going much deeper into the qualities not just the frame of your dosha, but the qualities of your dosha. So take the quiz last week on 907, and then think about today. Think of all the other qualities. Do you also experience those? Because then that might solidify what body type you are. And then in the future, if you want me to actually go through your specific photo and tell you exactly what you are in terms of that constitution and what the best lifestyle is around that, I'd be happy to do that, of course. So up next, let's go over the pitta, the pitta qualities. All right. Well, pitta specifically is made up in Ayurvedic medicine. It's called fire and water. Now, it's predominantly fire, but not so much. It's always balanced by that water, right? But it translates to that which cooks. And we'll go through the attributes from Dr. Vazantlad's book, and you'll see some interesting attributes for the pitta. Pitta, very, very straightforward, meaning like, I think you're going to understand the pitta very, very well as, as we get into it. It is a very straightforward body type and very different, very, very different than the vata and the kapha. Okay. So one of the first attributes is hot, good digestive fire. When you hear fire or digestive fire or agni in Ayurveda, you want to think of that as strength of digestion, stomach acid. And that's why they're also more prone to, which you'll hear in a moment, higher pH in the stomach or stomach acid or acid reflux. They have a strong appetite. Their body temperature tends to be higher. I'm going to keep throwing in my own little ad libs as well. And the reason is that, again, this is in Dr. Vasant Lad learned traditional Ayurvedic medicine, just like I did over in India, but that is more of how he speaks as well. So I just want to go over it too. So we say higher temperature, meaning that they're always hot. Like they're the one in the room that needs the AC just blasting to cool themselves down. They sweat more easily. So the hot as well as they tend more towards gray hair at a younger age, receding hairline or bald. They typically have lighter facial hair though. So it's uh, more fine hair and the facial hair might be scattered as well. Both men and women typically have finer, thinner hair on the top of the head and sometimes a lighter brown or blondish color. Sharp meaning for this attribute would be more of the pointed nose. But when we say pointed nose, we actually mean it's like a smaller nose that you would see on most, in the US at least, more models, right? So they have a more chiseled jawline, more of that kind of perfect nose, which I don't have that perfect nose. But again, like as we talk about body types, they're all fantastic. In this Western-based mentality, we're looking at, oh, 
that's the nose that we aspire to, or those are the eyes that we aspire to, or that's the hair that we aspire to. But the truth is like that's one body type. The body type and the model type look that we promote in the Western-based culture for the most part, and I'm happy to see it is actually changing a little bit, is more of the pitta base face. So if you want to think about that, like, oh, that person has that like specific Western-based model look, well, that's more of that pitta face. This smaller nose, no bump in it. They have more of like the almond eyes. Could be green eyes, could be blue eyes, more of that like chiseled jawline. That's more of that pitta based look to the face. They don't do well with um, a lot of heat. They get more irritable that way. They have typically a medium sized body frame. They don't tolerate light very well or sunshine. And that is typically where they don't do well in the heat, but also they have lighter eyes often. Not always. You can have brown eyes as a pitta, but oftentimes greener eyes or blue or hazel or whatever color you want to call a lighter eye tend towards more liquid or looser stool. So when you think of this as well, the dryness of the vata creates the constipation and the heat would be more of the maybe excessive urine, looser stool, a lot of sweat, they get thirsty often. Okay, tend more towards rashier skin. They sometimes have freckles on their skin, more inflammation of the skin in general, could have more towards acne. And that is because they often have oilier skin. Not always, but again, oilier skin where the vatas would have drier skin. Don't often do well with fried food. Pitta is governed by also the liver and gallbladder as well. Can have a sour stomach, acid pH, sensitive teeth, and excess saliva. But honestly, and I know that Vasant Lad wrote that in there, excessive mucus is also a, a very large kapha based trait, not just pitta. All right, pungent is another one of the attributes. Heartburn, burning sensations, stronger feeling of anger and hate. I want to talk about this just for a moment. The pitta is such a powerful force to be reckoned with that when it goes overboard, when there's an imbalance, it leads to greater amounts of anger, irritability, rage, aggressiveness, and ego. So again, there's a lot of pitta in certain people and it allows them, I always tell it allows them to do amazing things in life, but do not let it burn you out or burn you up or go too far. Because what can make you great can also overcome you. And that's the anger, the rage, the ego, the aggressiveness. They can be very, very aggressive. And a lot of people get turned off by it, but that's actually their constitution. That's their nature. Once you understand that, you say, oh, no, no, like that's part of who they are. Like I'm more, I'm definitely more of an aggressive type person. And that sometimes comes off as me sometimes being like too impatient or whatever it is. And that's definitely a pit of quality as well. But it's that I'm oftentimes, if I'm talking about a topic or if I'm talking about anything, I can take it too far. I can get a little bit overboard in terms of, and I'm sure you've noticed this, how passionate I can get about a, a topic. And that is that pit aside to it, meaning like there are certain things that I feel deeply and strongly about. And I was much worse when I was younger. I had that pitta temper when I was younger for sure. Like there's no doubt about that. But becoming more aware of my own body type and certainly the psychology has allowed me to be able to ground myself more. You know, it really has. And that's what I, I want to talk about right now as well. I'm going to get back to the attributes and then tell you how I kind of grounded a lot of my pitta as well. So they oftentimes have, uh, again, excessive sweating, sometimes a little bit more body odor to them because of, again, bacteria and all the sweating as well. They oftentimes have Sometimes a little redness on the cheeks, a little redness on the nose, but again, kapha can have the rosier cheeks, the redder cheeks. Oftentimes can have a little tinge of yellow to the eyes, a little tinge of yellow to the skin or the teeth. And that is simply what we talk about, that overproduction of pitta and that aggravation of the liver gallbladder. So keep all of that in mind. I'll give you a couple more attributes before I talk about how to balance that pitta. So kind of an overview. We talked about the... Um, Bob movements being regular, but a little bit more towards looser stool. They sweat much easier, sometimes have a little bit oilier skin, thinner hair, finer hair, lighter facial hair. They prefer cooler weather because they're warm all the time. Right now in Boston, it is the summer and you know my pitta becomes quite aggravated in the summer, meaning I go outside and if it's already hot, I start to get a little bit irritable. So I just say, all right, got to calm down. It's hot out. It's not that big a deal. But it just, it makes you more irritable. You, like you can't help it as a pitta you just feel that heat and it makes you hotter than a lot of other people might. All right. Like the Vata, you know, my wife is more towards the Vata and for her, I mean, she loves the heat. It can't really be hot enough or warm enough. She can lie in the sun. Here's a good example. 
She can lie in the sun on the beach for an hour where when we go away on vacation, I am under an umbrella if we're going to be outside in the sun for quite some time. Because one is, I mean, I, I tan pretty quick, but also that that's, that just really the sun and the heat tend to just burn me up. They make me a lot more irritable. So nobody wants an irritable <laughs> father or husband. So that's one thing right there. They have a medium frame. They can lose weight or gain weight for the typical pizza. They're actually able to put on a decent amount of muscle as well. Height is about average, but again, if you have a pitta vata, you can be a little taller or shorter. So hopefully those features are helpful. Again, we already talked about kind of the shape of the face. Now, we know that that pitta is more towards the aggression and the kind of like the ambition and doing all of those things again, which is great, but it can absolutely burn you out, especially if you trend more towards like a pitta vata, which I may. And so when you look at that, you can say, okay, you want to do all of these things and you want to be a good dad and husband and you want to be good with work and you want to do this, this, and like you just put all these pressures on yourself, that can absolutely burn you out. And so you have to be careful of that. The Pitta Kapha does much better because they have that stronger constitution. But when we look at it, and this goes for everybody, I mean, this goes our Western mentality. So that's why I want to talk about more about this in the future as well. It also is different depending on where you live in the season, meaning like we're in a Pitta time of the year. My Pitta is not aggravated in the winter, not, not in Boston for sure, but it is in the summer. So I have to do more cooling things in the summer than in the winter. So that's why you have to look at the doshas or you know what we're calling these attributes based on where you are in your life, because Pitt is also going to be stronger during the transformative years, which are your teenage years to about your maybe early 40s, maybe even early 50s for some people, depending on how they keep their body. And it also depends on like even where you are in the world. So here, like example. When you're in a Western-based civilization or the Western-based culture, which promotes working a lot and not as much balance with community and downtime, then you're going to be more in that pitta and vata-based state where you're always moving, you're always trying to accomplish things, and that's pitta in itself. But then when you're on vacation, maybe on a deserted island, well, that's going to be more of that kapha base, and that's going to be relaxing the pitta. So just understand that when you get more of that anger and irritability. And I think about this myself. Like If I'm ever having a challenging day at work, what do I do? I go outside in nature, and I know it's the city, but you know we do have some parks around. Right right down the street from me is the public gardens, they're called in Boston. And it's literally one of the most amazing places that I've ever been to. And it's right here in Boston. So I can go for a walk right there. I can put on some binaural beats if I want. And I can just basically be in nature and go for a walk and I can calm that pitta and I can also calm vata right there. So really great. Other things that you can do is meditation to calm that pitta. It is reading self-improvement based books, which I did for many, many years, still do to this day, just not to the same level. Because again, you you get more into things when you need them more. That's what creates the balance, right? We always talk about balance. Tai chi, walking, swimming is also a great activity for the pitta because it's cooling typically and it makes them uh, lighter in the water. They feel less pressure on them. Really, really nice. So that is the pitta. Now I want to go over the kapha. And the kapha attributes and qualities are this. Again, kapha, unique body type in itself. All of the body types, absolutely amazing. I've really come to see that as like, I just, I mean, when I look at people's body types, I just see the, really the beauty in all of them. And I honestly believe that. Meaning like when I see the thinner vata type, I can say that's a perfect body type for that person. It suits them so great. Same for the pitta. I'm like, okay, that body matches up with that mindset. That works great. And also for the kapha, I say, okay, that kapha body is going to serve them so well in life. That's how I choose to look at this. But that's also, I believe it's the best way. That's why when I said earlier, I think it's great that we're now moving away from one specific body type as a model, quote unquote, model type, which is the pitta vata is now moving into all body types, right? So we see some vata, we see some pitta, of course, and then we see kapha. And kapha, now we'll go through the attributes. The first attribute to kapha is heavy. But when we say heavy, you have to understand kapha is only overweight when it's out of balance. A kapha body type does not mean overweight. When I tell people in my practice that you're predominantly kapha, the initial inclination, if they know about the endomorph for the kapha, they get upset. And I want them to know, like hopefully they're listening to this podcast, is that that does not mean you're overweight. It just means you have a thicker frame. And again, that doesn't even sound appropriate, but 
Like it's all of these words that we like to give meaning to and we get upset over. And so that's why if I say someone has a thinner frame, they're like, I'm not thin. Well, it we're only looking at the joint and physical structure of the human body. It is us humans and our mindset of what we decided is good and bad that has really framed our reference of thinking about the world. But why is one better than the other? That's what I'm going to leave you with that question. Why is one frame? Why is the pitta frame better? Or why is the vata frame better? Or why would the kapha frame be better? They're all great frames. They're all great structures of the body. So larger body frame, and they have a more tendency towards being overweight. I didn't talk about this before, but the kapha voice is very unique. It's a deeper voice typically. The vata voice is a lighter voice. It talks almost more from like the throat. And the pitta voice is strong. It's not as deep as the kapha, but it's a commanding voice. Okay, so they are slower metabolism, the kapha, typically slower walking, slower moving in general, like to sleep a little bit more, really good sleepers, unlike the vata or the pitta, which can be disturbed sleep. They typically, again, are a little bit colder, sometimes clammier skin. They have a lot more congestion, a lot more kind of a mucus-based cough rather than the dry cough of the vata. Oilier skin, for sure. Typically, they can have the excessive salivation. We talked about mucus production, congestion in the chest, sinuses, throat, and head. I will tell you, I have a lot of kapha in this body of mine. And the issue is that my frame is not set up as a kapha frame, but I have so much of the kapha constitution. And the reason I've spoken about this before is my mom is a kapha pitta and my father is a vata kapha. And when you look at that, it's like, okay, well, I have all of the body type, but which two overlap? Kapha. And so when I have that, like meaning like even though my joints, my frame is not set up as kapha, I can put on weight fairly easily. And that allows me to put on muscle, but it also allows me to put on body fat if I'm eating a lot more processed food. Now, at the same time though, winter is without a doubt my worst season. It's a terrible season for me. I honestly have to do a lot of work January through April. I have to do a lot of work to balance my kapha. I'll talk about that in a moment. But I have to do a lot of drying-based foods, a lot of drying-based herbs to get rid of the congestion I pick up so easily. And that's because Boston is a damp, cold environment. It's the worst environment, honestly, I could live in. It really is. When I look at that, the best environment for me, like in the winter, would be more of Arizona or Southern California, which is more dry, especially if I go there during the winter, because that would help balance me for my body type, for that kapha. So I just want to put that in there. Again, we can always think about our balances, which is why I do try to travel during the winter. The sunlight, more of my Mediterranean background, I do so much better in that. Okay. The kapha skin I've spoken about before, some of the best skin that you can have. It's thicker. It has more glow to it, more shine to it. It's typically pretty smooth. The kapha hair is thick. It's a wavy hair usually, and it can have a good shine to it. That's because there is more oil in that kapha body type, which means they're less prone to wrinkling as well. That's why there's so many amazing qualities to all of the body type, whereas the vata and the pitta can wrinkle a little bit easier, specifically the vata. Kaphas love, unlike the vata, which likes to always be moving, kaphas don't like exercise as much, or if they do, they like slower exercise. You'll see a lot of kaphas get into yoga, even though they actually need more of the rigorous based training where the vatas are doing more of the rigorous training, but they actually need more of the yoga. So it's funny how our body type trends and our psychology tends towards something, even though it might not be best for us. So coffers are a little slow to get moving in the morning. They like some caffeine to stimulate them, but again, so do all the body types because it gives us that get up and go. They typically have firmer muscles, thicker muscles, nice strong muscles, typically really good at endurance. I didn't talk about that before, but they have really good endurance. They maintain pretty good energy once they do get going. Oftentimes a paler complexion, no matter what the culture, they have oftentimes a more of a mucus or saliva in the mouth, but also sometimes a white coated tongue, which shows that ama or oftentimes a colder stomach, lack of stomach acid. So those are some of the attributes. Again, I'll link up the textbook of Ayurveda by Vazant Lad. And then let me give you just a few more of the psychological based characteristics, because I think we went pretty in depth there with the actual body type and the frame. And you can also go back to episode 907 for that one. But kaphas, you know, they don't have the aggressiveness of the pitta, which is really why they're, in general, a really nice constitution to be around. Kaphas are very loving, very nurturing. They make great parents. They're like naturally want to be there to raise their children and just take great interest in them. They're really good friends. They have a huge heart. They're calm. They're not as easily angered. They prefer a little bit slower of a lifestyle, nothing too crazy. But oftentimes, though, they can let 
negative emotions begin to build up. They can sometimes tend maybe a little bit more towards jealousy. They will let others take the lead, sometimes to a fault. They don't often speak up as much as they maybe should. But at the same time, they're a great listener. They're a great friend. They can be great with others. So those are some kind of the characteristics. So if we think about that, kapha is the more anabolic body type, accumulates more, oftentimes a thicker frame. The pitta, medium frame, they are more towards the aggressiveness, irritability at their worst, but at their best, they're a natural born leader. They're confident. They're outgoing. The vata, a little bit more nervous, a little bit more anxiety, thinner frame. Even think about it, right? They have a thinner frame, a little bit more anxious, maybe a little bit more insecure, but they're dreamers. They're active. They love being out there. They love experiencing new things, travel, all of those things. You know, so again, when we look at all of these different characteristics, we're saying they're all amazing, right? Like you want a little bit of all of them. That's the truth. And that's what Ayurveda is all about. Ayurveda is about balance. So you have to understand you don't want to be too far in one direction. You don't want to be too much of the kapha where you're accumulating, right? You have, you're not active enough and maybe you're eating a little bit too much because you do feel emotional and you're using food as kind of an emotional based buffer. Or as a pitta, you don't want to go too far with your aggressiveness or you know where you're too sharp with people and you're too short and you don't have the patience. And then with vata, you don't want to be too flighty. You don't want to be too erratic and you don't want to be late for every meeting that you're supposed to be at or forgetful or whatever it might be. And then if you are too much in the one direction, you kind of want to balance it with the other. And we're going to be talking about that more in subsequent weeks. So hopefully today's episode was helpful. Remember, it is always about balance. Every body type is absolutely phenomenal. And when we're looking at body types going forward at next week, it'll be our last show specifically about kind of pulling your body type together because too many people try to take a 10-question quiz. When you take a 10-question quiz, the likelihood that you know your constitution is at a very surface level. And that's what I see online. I mean, I love it. I really do. I love people preaching Ayurveda. I love them talking about it. But when people are calling out their body type and I see them on Instagram and other things, I'm like, that's it's just not your body type. I know that you feel that way because you have the mental characteristics and this and this and this, and that might have to do with your maybe you're the oldest born, or maybe, you know, like that was an experience that you suffered or negatively as a child or came through positively, and that's why it's being reinforced later as an adult. You know, knowing that is not going to balance your constitution. That's the problem. What I want people to do is understand that if you're too thin as a vata, here's how we gain weight. We're going to talk about adding more of the kapha based qualities. And if you're a kapha and you're gaining too much weight, hard for you to lose it, we're going to talk about an anti kapha based protocol moving more towards a vata based protocol. So, and then again, same with the pitta, whether they're gaining weight, losing weight, or whether they're more of the emotional based qualities. That's what we're going to talk about in subsequent weeks, but we're going to do one more episode of the Ayurvedic body type so that you figure out your body type specifically. Next week, I've been looking forward to doing this for a while. I'm going to do a celebrity body type matching, not quiz, but body type matching assessment. So what I'm going to do is try to pull out the different doshas and subdoshas. So remember, this vata, pitta, kapha, but then there's your specific dosha as well. Meaning like vata, pitta, kapha are the three. But most people are, let's just say like 70% vata, 20% pitta, 10% kapha, right? Because there's variations, there's degrees. And then some people might be 60% pitta, 30% vata, and now what's left there? <laughs> 10% kapha. Or you can be predominantly one. You could be 80% kapha, 15% pitta, and 5% vata. So typically you're never all one, but you definitely trend towards one. What I'm going to do is frame-wise next week, I'm going to give you images now, and it's going to take me some time to find all of those because I'm, I'm not <laughs> a huge into the celebrity world, but I'm going to find celebrities that you may know and uh, put them up, and I'm going to see where your constitution currently is right now or when actually you're at your best, right? Because celebrities are typically oftentimes focused on their body, and that's obviously what we promote in the U.S., and then that's them kind of at their best body. And so I want you to see your frame. When you're at your best, would you basically look at that body or at that frame? Again, doesn't mean one body type is better than the other. And that's actually my goal next week. My goal next week is to show you all amazing bodies from every different dosha or body type and let you see that your body type matches up closest with this person. And that's more of your constitution, more of your frame. And then we're going to talk about then how the frame is balanced by nutrition and a little bit with lifestyle as well, and how the psychology is actually not as much balanced by the nutrition, which could throw off your frame and constitution, but actually more by the lifestyle itself and psychology. 
Looking forward to it. We've got a lot to go, but if you stay with me, you're going to know in depth how to use Ayurveda in your life with your family and then teach it with others. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Really do appreciate it. If this show is helpful, please do feel free to pass it along to anyone it may serve. Are you ready to heal yourself and then go on to heal others? If so, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute can help you discover proven functional medicine protocols that blend the best of seven different healing disciplines from around the world. I personally share with you the exact handouts and protocols I use in my private practice that enable people to get well, lose the weight, and live longer, stronger. I want to pass this information on to the next generation of health coaches, and that is exactly why I created IHP. We are the future of the health coaching industry, and the skills and knowledge you will learn will make you an in-demand certified health coach anywhere in the world. Although we have many medical professionals taking the IHP certifications, no experience is necessary, and half our members have no previous health certifications. At the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, our motto is a health coach in every home. Our goal is that you take this knowledge and then share it with family, friends, loved ones, your community, or in a practice where you create a career you love and can be proud of. The global IHP community is filled with some of the most kind and caring people in the world, and we can't wait to welcome you into our world soon. For more information or to set up a discovery call with one of our IHP Health Coach graduates, simply head over to integrativehealthpractitioner.org.